Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. My name is Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today we're going to talk about sports.、Uh, more、mm. specifically, we're going to talk about one sport.、Uh, it's part of the tradition of pool games or billiards,、mm. and there are many kinds of sports that involve hitting balls on a green table and trying to knock other balls into pockets.、Mm -hmm. uh, the most common one here in Taiwan is nine ball, but there's also eight ball. And then there's one called cutthroat. If you're playing、Ooh. with the、uh, three people, that sounds serious. But another sport, another type of、uh, pool, I guess、mm -hmm. you could call it, is、uh, snooker, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It uses a different kind of table. The balls are smaller. They don't have stripes. Or numbers on them,、mm -hmm. and、uh, yeah, it has a whole different set of rules. Yeah, the first thing I noticed about snooker because I had to go online to see what it looked like was that the balls were very small, and there were a lot of them and a lot of red ones、uh, for some reason. Now I know why because I read the article. But yeah, I'm not familiar with snooker.、Uh, this is my first experience talking about it or even looking at it. Snooker is similar,、um, but it's It's a little different too, and Tom's actually played it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have Tom、uh, talk about some of the uh, uh, differences that are very distinctive between the two games. Or our article will talk about those、mm. differences.、Uh, yes, indeed, I did actually learn how to play snooker here in、cool. good old Taiwan. I actually had not heard of this sport before、mm -hmm. I came to Taiwan many many years ago. So I have Taiwan to thank for teaching me the game of snooker. Although I haven't played it in many years either, and this is kind of inspiring here. Maybe I should go out and find someone to play with. But in any case, we're going to find out about snooker right now. Let's read the entire contents of our article one time. You are likely familiar with pool, in which players try to use a long stick called a cue to knock or pot balls into pockets on the table. However, you might not have heard of snooker. The games are similar, but the rules and, in particular, the massive size of the table make them quite distinct. The rules of snooker were devised in 1882 by Sir Neville Chamberlain, a British Army officer. At first, it was a game for gentlemen and military officers, but soon numerous snooker clubs opened up, making the game more accessible. In the 1920s, people began to play professionally. And took part in tournaments, the first of which was the Professional Championship of Snooker. Since then, the game has continued to expand in popularity. The enormous green baize table is home to a variety of colored balls. In addition to the white cue ball, which the players strike, there are 15 red balls. A player must first try to pot one of these. They can then try for one of the colored balls: yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and black. Then they try to pot a red again, and so on. Each time a ball is potted, a player scores points. See the accompanying table. Players take turns making shots, and if they pot a ball, they keep going. Colored balls are put back on the table after being potted, whereas red ones are not. After all the red balls are potted, players aim for the colored balls in order from lowest to highest value. If a player makes a foul shot, which could involve missing a ball, hitting a ball they didn't aim for, or accidentally potting the wrong ball, their opponent gets points. The player with the most points wins the frame, and one snooker match can consist of anything from 11 to 35 frames. Because of this scoring system and the size of the table, players can't just play casually. They need to plan ahead to set up their next few scoring shots, or to leave the cue ball in a safe place. Snooker isn't easy, but with practice, it's an extremely rewarding pastime. So this is our sports unit. We're talking about uh, uh, a game of billiards, you could say, where you use a pool table and you have a cue. That's what we call those long sticks, and of course, lots of balls that you want to knock into the pockets, or as they say in snooker, you pot balls into pockets. That's a new one for me. I've never heard that before. So we're going to talk about the tactical game of snooker. 
It's very popular in the UK,、uh, much so, much more so than in the United States. But、uh, um, as Tom said, he actually was introduced to snooker here in Taiwan. So I'm sure you'll find snooker in various places around the world. If it's tactical, it means you're doing something that takes some planning. So you're going to make a specific shot in order to pot those balls into the pockets on the table. Right, so if something's tactical, it involves tactics or special skills and techniques and planning、mm-hmm. uh, to get your job done. And you're likely familiar with pool. A、uh, pool, of course, includes the game of nine ball, but also eight ball and other games, as I mentioned before. But、uh, again, in pool, players try to use a long stick called a cue to knock or pot balls into pockets on the table. Some people have their own cue because you can take care of it.、Mm. And oftentimes, if you use the house cue,、mm-hmm. uh, then you have to check it to make sure it's straight. Usually, people roll it on the table to see if it's a straight cue. Oh, interesting! And you use that <laughs> stick、uh, to hit the cue ball, and then the cue ball hits the ball you're trying to hit into a. Pocket. Yeah, so that long stick is called a cue, and you're going to knock the balls into the pockets. That is something that's similar to pool、uh, that I'm familiar with.、Uh, but a lot of people out there may not have heard of snooker before. So what's the difference? Well, the games of pool and snooker are similar. They have some things that are kind of、uh, the same, but the rules and, in particular, the massive size of the table make them quite distinct or very unique. So there are things that are really just things you find in the game of snooker, and some that you just find in pool. Now. I looked at the table online when I was、uh, watching a video on YouTube, and I couldn't tell that it was really a lot bigger than a pool table. But Tom tells me it is. I haven't seen it in real life.、Um, it's got that green cloth on the top of the table that pool tables have as well. We'll talk about that in a minute. But、uh, yeah, there are just lots of balls involved in snooker, many more than in pool, and they're also very small. Right. If you've played snooker for a while and then you go to try to play nine ball, you'll、yeah. probably think, "Oh, this table is pretty small, and the balls are so big." So they are quite different、mm. from each other. But again,、uh, you may not have heard of snooker. I should say that snooker has the O O sound there, like book、mm-hmm. or cook. You can't say snooker.、No. You have to say snooker.、Uh, it's a subtle difference there. And the games are similar. Pool and snooker. They're similar in that you hit a cue ball and try. To knock balls into pockets, but the rules of snooker and, in particular, the massive size of the table make them quite distinct. Distinct means they're unique, and you can tell the difference between them. Now, the rules of snooker were devised way back in 1882 by Sir Neville Chamberlain, a British Army officer. He was actually a prime minister before.、Uh, Churchill. So he preceded、uh, Winston Churchill、uh, around the time of World War II. Now it goes on to say, at first it was a game for gentlemen and military officers, but soon numerous snooker clubs opened up, making the game more accessible. So, like in British society, they have gentlemen who are cultured people, who are educated and intellectual, and so of course these things usually start with them, the gentlemen. And also military officers. It's kind of an exclusive game for them, but eventually other people find out about it, and then snooker clubs opened up, making the game more accessible. Common people could play snooker. I suspect it was mostly men who played this game, but you never know. Maybe some ladies joined in on the fun as as well. Ooh, back then I don't know, Tom. <laughs> back then,、uh, women and men didn't usually socialize in places like this. But、uh, I did want to mention that、um, in the British society, at least, they have these different, definitely different class levels of people, much more than much more than America had.、Uh, I know we had some class system systems in、uh, bigger cities like New York. Or Boston,、uh, where people had more money than just the average worker who just worked all day long、uh, to make enough to feed their family. So these guys had 
they had leisurely time, so they、mm. could go and just play and hang out at these clubs. But like our article says, as the as the game became more popular and well known,、um, more society was taking part in it. Became more accessible. You could、uh, go in and play it, even though you weren't a gentleman or a military officer. So in the 1920s, people began to play professionally and took part in tournaments. Now, if you're playing professionally, some sort of sport that is, it usually means you're making money、uh, doing it. If you're an amateur. Sure. Typically, you're just playing for fun,、mm -hmm. or、uh, you're just starting out at it. If you're a professional, you're pretty good, and you've taken a lot of time to、uh, develop your skills. So they had tournaments, and the first of which of、uh, these tournaments was called the Professional Championship of Snooker. So since then, the game has continued to expand in popularity. So it sounds like something that really caught on over the years, and、uh, it just has continued to be popular. If you look online, you can see that they still have these、uh, these tournaments that people take part in. Indeed, and it expanded around the world. And I suspect that,、uh, like cricket,、mm. uh, it was exported into Commonwealth countries where it became more popular than in other countries. So maybe lots of people in India or Pakistan、mm. or Australia or New, New Zealand play this game than people in the rest of the world. That's just my guess. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的是寒假专刊 Unit Eleven, The Tactical Game of Snooker. 这个单元带大家了解一项有趣的运动。很多同学可能都打过撞球，不过大家听过 snooker 吗？看完这个单元，略微了解游戏规则后，大家或许可以尝试看看。好，我们现在来看学习重点，请看到第一段。You are likely familiar with pool. Pool. 本身当然也是一种运动，就是我们说的撞球。然后呢，请同学看到第二句。However, you might not have heard of snooker. 请同学特别注意的是 ，you might not have heard of 这个地方，请划线。这是一个特殊的句型 ，might 后面加上 have 再加 pp 的时候，这是表示对过去可能的猜测。你可能没听过。好，再来，请同学看到第三句 ，The games are similar， 也就是指 pool 和这个 snooker， 这两者呢很类似，但是在规则方面也是相当不同的。请看到 distinct 这个字，这个字的意思是彼此有别、截然不同的。好，那再接着往下，下面就会说明。关于这个 snooker， 它有哪一些规则？不过我们先从历史看起哦。到底这个运动的起源是什么 ？The rules of snooker were devised in 1882。先说明到底这套规则是谁制定的。所以，请同学特别注意到的是，词语搭配 rules were devised， 由谁制定的？那再接着往下看第二个句子这边。老师要请大家特别注意到的是，结尾的这个形容词 accessible。那由于哦一开始的时候啊，其实会去接触这些运动的人很有限。那后来呢，有越来越多俱乐部也都提供这项运动之后，才越来越多人可以接触到。所以后面这 accessible 就是容易接触到的。再接着呢，请同学往下看到第三句 ：in the nineteen twenties。People began to play professionally and took part in tournaments. The first of which, 好，到这里结束。我们请看 which。请问同学知不知道 which 所代替的是什么？没错，就是前面的这个 tournaments 啊，也就是我们讲的锦标赛。好，接下来第四句，从那个时候开始，办了比赛之后开始，那这个。这种运动呢，就变得越来越受欢迎 ，expand in popularity， 这欢迎度呢，大大的提升了。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, guys. This is our sports unit, and instead of talking about something that is more common like football, baseball, soccer, we're going to talk about the game of snooker, which is very similar to billiards or a、uh, pool that we play、um, in many parts of the world, especially in the U.S. Of course, so you've got a big table. And you've got lots of balls. You've got a long stick that's called a cue, and you try to knock or pot balls into the pockets on the table.、Uh, the video I saw, there was some sort of like referee or you know somebody who was、uh, making sure people were following the rules, and he had white gloves on,、mm. and he would go down into the pockets to retrieve those little balls and、uh, put them back on the table. But he looked like a butler to me.、Mm. He was all dressed up. In a tux with white gloves. Exactly, and of course,、uh, the referee, I guess, will take out the colored balls、mm. and place them back on the table in their specific positions. But I believe the red balls will stay down. We'll、True. get to that、uh, in just a second.、Mm. So let's talk about the table here. The enormous green baize table is home to a variety of colored balls. So if something's enormous, it's quite large.、Mm -hmm. At least this table is enormous compared to a traditional pool table. In which you play nine ball, and so it's big and it's made with bays, or at least the surface of it is bays. I did not know this word before our lesson today, but it's kind of a material that goes on top of the table, and it's kind of soft and it's perfect for playing pool or billiards or whatever. And it's home to a variety of colored balls, and there's a series of them、uh, that we have、uh, later on in the lesson here. And in addition to the white cue ball, which the Players strike with the cue. There are 15 red balls, and they are arranged in a triangle at the beginning of the game. And then players go back and forth trying to hit a red ball in, followed by a colored ball. Oh, so they use that triangular shape to put the balls inside, like they do in pool. Yeah, I guess they call that a rack. Yeah, because we would say rack 'em up,、mm. you know, to put those balls back in there and start a new game. Rack 'em up. Oh, interesting.、Um, I wanted to mention for those out there who love. Uh, just arts and crafts in general. That fabric that's on those tables is often referred to as felt.、Mm. It could be cotton or some sort of wool. It's usually green, as Tom said. But we use felt a lot when we're playing with kids or we're making little things、uh, with kids. You know, little shapes and sizes. It's very soft and it's.、Um, It's pretty good to make、uh, different things with. Anyway, that's felt, F-E-L-T. So you rack them up, and、uh, it says here there are 15 red balls, and a player must first try to pot one of these.、Um, instead of saying pot one of them, what would we say in pool? Just、uh, pocket. I pocket think we、one. use in American English.、Uh, you try to pocket the ball, which、hmm. means you try to put it in the pocket. Right. You've got the side pocket, the corner pocket, etc.、Mm. And snooker does have the same number of pockets. There are six of them,、uh, two side pockets and four corner pockets. Yeah. And yeah, that's what you try to do. At least in American English, English will say pocket the ball. But、mm -hmm. I guess in、uh, jolly old England, they'll say pot the ball. <laughs>、uh, the person、uh, most appropriate to write this article is actually from the UK. He is indeed.、Uh, they can then try for one of the colored balls. So the colored balls include yellow, green, brown, blue, pink. Pink and black, and they each have different points. So the black has the highest point value that you can get, and I understand that you have to go in the order of the value. So the black ball is the last ball that you're going to try to pot、uh, or pocket if you were playing pool. So each time a ball is potted, a player scores points. So we've got a table here in the article that you can see. We're calling it we're calling it the accompanying table. Is something if something accompanies something else, it goes. Along with it,、uh, maybe you have a friend,、um, and they want to go for a walk, and they ask if you want to go along with them. You can accompany them to the park, or maybe your dog always accompanies you when you take a walk late at night. So there's a table that you can check out with some of the values that you want to、uh, know before you play the game. Yeah, I won't get into the details, but、uh, the ball they try to hit in most often, of course, is the black ball、uh -huh. because it's worth seven points. So you hit a red ball in, and hopefully you will have a shot on the black ball、uh, to score more points. 
And you can see the values in the accompanying table. Players take turns making shots, and if they pot a ball, they keep going. So yes, indeed, when you play a game, you take turns.、Uh, if it's your turn, then you're the one who's going to shoot, and if you miss your shot, then it's the other player's turn. So you. Take turns. You alternate back and forth、uh, your various plays. We do that in volleyball. You get to keep serving the ball until you、uh, miss, or you have a mistake, and then you have to turn it over. So it's a good thing to keep making those pot potted balls, I guess. Now, after you've shot all the red balls, they've been potted. Players aim. They try to、um, hit the colored balls in order from lowest to highest value. Lowest would be the red. Now you've already done the red, so yellow is two. Highest is black. If a player makes a foul shot, which could involve missing a ball, hitting a ball that they didn't aim for, or accidentally potting the wrong ball, then their opponent gets points.、Uh, that's similar to some other sports. Now, if you If you make a foul shot, you're doing something that is against the rules, or you're doing something wrong.、Uh, we have fouls in、uh, basketball. If you if you hit another player like you're not supposed to, or in baseball, you can hit a foul ball that goes outside the lines of the baseball field. That's a foul shot.、Um, You can also make a foul by a missing a ball. If you involve something, it just means it has it has something to do with that particular thing. So、um, that's one way to hit a foul shot: just missing a ball. Mm -hmm. And there are various kinds of foul shots. It could involve, or it could、uh, include include missing a ball. Like if you're supposed to hit a red ball、yeah. and you miss it, then you'll lose points that way. Yes, when it's your turn, you're supposed to actually come in contact with the ball with the cue ball. I would miss the ball. No, right. I mean, so that's、yeah. why you try to snooker <laughs> people so they don't have a shot.、Mm. Uh, so they'll have to bank it off the side, and hopefully they'll hit the ball they're supposed to hit. But a lot of times they miss. And they lose points. That's all part of the strategy. So yes, you could miss a ball, or you could hit a ball you're not supposed to be shooting. If you're supposed to hit the <laughs> yellow ball and you actually hit the brown ball,、uh, that can cause you、uh, some trouble there. And of course, you don't want to pot the wrong ball,、mm. and then you'll actually give your opponent points. And of course, if you hit the cue ball into the pocket, that's a big no-no as well. So if you accidentally do something, you're doing something unintentionally. You didn't do it on purpose.、Um, maybe it was an accident.、Um, it was unintentional. It was unexpected. So you accidentally potted the wrong ball. That's also something that I would do as. Well, but if you do some of these things, you make a foul shot, and that includes these things we've talked about. Your opponent gets points, not you. Exactly, and the player with the most points wins the frame.、Mm. And one snooker match can consist of anything from eleven to thirty-five frames. So one game is a frame,、huh. and then you have、uh, a number of frames to play in a match. Uh, just like in tennis, of course, you have various、uh, what is it games, and、Six、then you have games, a set、yeah. or whatever.、Mm -hmm. uh, it's similar in snooker here, but they play quite a few frames here, eleven to thirty-five. So a match can go on for quite a long time, maybe even several hours. And indeed, I think.、Uh, I think snooker is relatively popular enough with people here in Taiwan because I have seen tournaments broadcast on the local cable sports channels. Oh, really?、Uh, and、uh, I used to watch it if I had time because I do understand the rules of this game, so it's kind of fun to watch. And I believe、uh, Taiwan produces a number of top players、cool. in snooker as well. Uh, as they do with the nine ball, so yes, indeed,、uh, these kinds of games are quite popular here in good old Taiwan. Now, because of the scoring system and the size of the table, players can't just play casually. You have to plan. That's why we're calling it a tactical game. So you have to plan ahead to set up or arrange、uh, your、uh, few scoring shots, or You need to leave the cue ball in a safe place. So we're saying here, our author is, snooker isn't easy, but with practice, it's an extremely rewarding pastime. Something you do in your free time. If something's rewarding, it's satisfying to you. It's gratifying. You enjoy it. So if you haven't tried snooker, 
Maybe this is the year for you to try. There is certainly a pool hall near you that probably has a snooker table. It probably doesn't cost too much to rent the table by the hour. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. 好，接着我们看第三段，请同学特别注意到的。这样的运动哦，这个运动里面呢，有一些专业的术语，包括说，哎，它的这个母球，英文该怎么讲啊？叫 Q ball。好，那后面好好多句子其实都是在说明说，到底这样子的运动应该要如何进行。那我们就先看一下第五个句子好了。那我们先弄清楚到底哦。在进行这项运动的时候，要如何得分 ？Each time a ball is potted， 好，也就是呢，球进袋了，那球员呢就得分了。那而后 ，players take turns making shots， 所以原来啊是球员他们会轮流击球，那如果进球就可以呢继续。好，再来，请看到第七个句子 ：Colored balls are put back on the table after being potted。好，原来这些有颜色的球呢，它入袋之后会被再放回桌上 ，whereas red ones are not。而红球则不用。要提醒同学特别注意的是 ，whereas 这个副词连接词，它通常呢是用来连接鲜明的对比。你看，有颜色的其他颜色的球是要放回桌上继续打的，那红色的则不用。那这就是很鲜明的对比。好，再来，请同学呢。继续往下看，第三段都是在说明规则。如果呢有球员他出杆犯规了 ，if a player makes a foul shot， 好 ，foul 我们知道在运动竞赛当中，通常呢就是触犯了这个规定。好，再来，请同学看到第四段，看到第四段，第二句 ，they need to plan ahead to set up their next few scoring shots。原来啊，其实从事这个运动要得胜，也是要动脑筋的，需要提前策划。They need to plan ahead. 好，最后作者告诉我们，其实啊，听起来这些游戏规则有点复杂，但多练习，其实呢，就会知道该怎么玩。Snooker isn't easy, but with practice, 但多加练习 ，it's an extremely rewarding pastime. 特别请同学注意 ，rewarding， 那就表示说你从这当中其实是会有很多收获的。好，以上就是我们针对这篇文章所进行的中文讲解，谢谢。That's it for today. Hopefully, we have inspired you to head down to your local pool hall and try to play some snooker. If you're not familiar with this game enough, you can always have a friendly game of nine ball. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.